poor people right up to the river and people that haven't lived here. I mean, as long as I have that care about the river, care about this community. Um, I don't, I haven't talked to a single resident that really thinks that we need this development at all. Um, we're kind of just working our way backwards. We're trading what people want here and how we want to live our lives for development and cookie cutter homes and more businesses than I think we can support as a community. We're trading what's on the wall that I noticed for concrete and we're building buildings to show what used to be when the buildings are still there. Those old buildings, the mill buildings are still there. We can build a museum type of thing, walkway, to show what is there since it is still there, instead of building around it and basically destroying its character. Um, and that's about it. Um, if we could have Monica speak and then we'll do a, a quick summary of the chat box that everyone can evaluate. Monica Lenny, Tanbox Morning, Kristen Olney. I am very impressed with the presentations I've heard tonight. It's actually very exciting to me. I'm also very impressed with the professionals that have come tonight to answer questions. I've learned so much. Um, I have many concerns, but I will start with traffic. I have spoke to the gentleman performing the traffic survey and you know highway 18 is an absolute mess and once that is actually resolved we're going to find even more traffic on the snoqualmie parkway i just cannot fathom the thought of large container trucks and commercial trucks that weigh thousands of pounds that are loaded with cargo coming from the tacoma port or the seattle port driving through our residential neighborhoods and polluting our air with their diesel fumes to go to this new site. Um, they're very dangerous. And as you know, I happen to live on the downward slope of the Snoqualmie Parkway. So a 40 mile an hour speed limit quickly turns into 60. And trucks cannot stop quickly. And we have families that are pushing baby strollers across the parkway, little kids trying to cross the street to catch the school bus. Something needs to be done and I believe the best way to mitigate it is to reduce traffic, not add to it. And that also includes cars, and I do have concerns with uh, drunk drivers as well. Um, I'd like to know who took out the railroad crossing at the end of the bottom of the parkway. I'm assuming it was a truck because, wow, that's the second time I've seen that taken down in a year and a half. Um, moving on, I have an environmental background, and one of my huge concerns, and I've asked a lot of questions tonight, is not only water quality, but water availability and PCB contamination. We counted 11 sites that are contaminated with PCBs on the map over here, yet we have no knowledge of how the testing was done, how far did they drill. We know that the land was filled in, potentially 15 or 25 <coughs> feet. Um, just to explain a little history, because um, the oil business is something that I worked in in the past, a transformer uses oil, which becomes contaminated with PCBs. This transformer caught on fire, and the solution for Warehouser was to cover it with dirt. So this has never been cleaned up. Also, if you go back in environmental regulations, you'll find that back in the 70s, it was completely legal to pour oil on your roadways for dust control. And nobody took into consideration petroleum hydrocarbons, PCBs, cancer-causing effects, um, chemicals that leach into our groundwater that we eventually drink, which I know our city has a wonderful clean report, but they don't test for PCBs. If you look at the list, things that I'm concerned about are not tested for because they're not required to be tested for by state law, and they shouldn't be in the water. So I would like to see some PCB testing done on the water, not only, well, at, at this site. Um, I also find it very interesting that um, well, Christy did a great job talking about our above ground water. I would like to talk about our underground water rivers. We have aquifers that are flowing, and the gentleman geologist just explained it to me, did an excellent job. A huge 
river runs under the site that's contaminated with PCBs. It goes into the actual sites that we're pumping well water out and feeding to our residents. So major, major concern for me. I would like to see further testing. I was told that groundwater, groundwater monitoring devices were put into place by Weyerhaeuser. However, they have not been used for years. They were simply covered over and the plan based on the discussion I just had with Tom is that they're going to cap those. That's old school. You don't cap PCBs and chemicals that can leach into groundwater. We all know how much rain we get in this area. The soil needs to be removed. It needs to be fully remediated in my view um, to prevent future contamination. And I would just like to say um, Regarding water rights, if a water district has purchased the water rights on this land, I do not see how phase two and phase three can be approved. Um, there simply is no water available, and we were in a drought just a year and a half ago based on our, our city's determination. So the last thing I will say is I did see Bob here earlier. This is an exciting <coughs> meeting, a lot of concerned citizens. Ultimately, our city council will make this decision are there any city council members present? They're, yeah. they're not present because this becomes a quasi judicial if they were advised by the attorney not to be present. Otherwise, they have, okay. to, have to have to every conversation they have okay. with everybody. So everything that they do that influences their decision has to be out and on the record. Okay, the fair office. enough. I just hope that they will all listen to this recording so they can hear what the citizens who they represent are saying and what our concerns truly are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you all for staying late too and the, the consultants. I really appreciate everyone being here. Um, that concludes the scoping meeting, but the scoping comment period goes for one more day. It ends uh, tomorrow. We have a special uh, email to the city at the top of your screen that's separate from all of our employee emails. This will be good through the whole process. Um, and so anything can go there and it's shared with the consultants uh, and becomes part of the record. Uh, and I will advise that if you're gonna mail something to us, please don't use our street address. We had a FEMA check mailed a month ago and it didn't go to PO Box 987. Um, can, can we get out? And actually, I wanna let everyone go. I'm gonna stay late. I can answer anyone's questions, get you any material, but I wanna kind of close the meeting. Yes, the purpose of tonight was scoping. What should okay. be in the EIS? And so the uh, uh, deadline for that is tomorrow. So we can look at all the <coughs> Exactly. Okay. Yeah. More time to write the date by the uh, I'll probably go home at 5 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm willing to put any emails. Uh, prior to this meeting tonight, we collected all the emails we've already gotten. And we've already given them to both consultants and the applicant, and we have a first house record. I'm sure I'll get more tonight. Anything I get tomorrow will be added to that. There are two written methods uh, that we use tonight, the big boards and the small sheets. Those will be added. Any comment that was handed to me tonight or anyone else will be included. All that will go into what's called the scoping rule letter. Any group questions? A question about can we get access to everything that people submit for this project? Absolutely everything, okay. including that. Okay. So, um, the preference is public records requests. Okay. So, uh, and also the effort before we get our new website is to post everything we have material-wise on that website. You'll see one thing missing from the city's web, web page. You have all the historic documents going way back, all of the application materials, but we need to add the annexation implementation plan approved by city council is one of the documents that's missing. That'll be up this week. The scoping letter will be there too. Um, the applicant's <coughs> website is separate from the city's. It's informational, but it's not a public record. So please focus on your comments to uh, city email, drop in, phone call, uh, and my preference is that email. So but will city council have any access to this information that we've yes, shared tonight? the entire record is being okay. produced. So the, and the main part of that record is the draft EIS, then public comment, final EIS, and then that informs the city's action. All the, all the comments have actually just become exhibits before we exhibit them. Yeah, at multiple stages. This is just the first meeting for scoping. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for comment during the draft EIS going into the final EIS. 
So that'll still be some heavily noticed on that. So if you don't have any more group questions, I thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. I really um, appreciate your decorum. Uh, and I'm willing to stay late, answer questions. If you're tired, um, contact me tomorrow, Thursday. Especially tomorrow if you have any more scoping EIS comments. Thank you.